Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Just a couple of housekeeping rules before we get started. Um, this webinar is being recorded and the recording and PowerPoint will be made available after the event. Your microphone has been muted and video disabled and will remain so for the duration of this webinar. If you have a question, please submit it using the chat or the Q&A tab located on your screen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patsy Ayala. I am the Senior Field Representative for Assemblywoman Baladares. We're happy to have you here to guide you on cyber security and other scams. So let's start uh, with our agenda. Today, first, we're going to be having our Assemblywoman Suzette Baladares, Senator Scott Wilk, Los Angeles City Council John Lee, followed by Los Angeles County Sheriff Department, and with the presentation of the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. At the end, we're going to have time for questions and answers. So let's start with our elected officials. Good morning, and thank you for being here. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a boon for fraudsters, scam artists, and other bad actors. But we're working in the legislature to crack down on these criminals. It's also important for us to learn how to protect ourselves. And that means protecting our personal information. You're going to learn a lot of important skills today that will prevent criminals from targeting you, your information, and your assets. Thank you so much to the community partners who helped put this together today. Congressman Mike Garcia, Senator Scott Wilk, Councilman John Lee, Cal State Northridge, Go Matadors, and the many Chambers of Commerce, Rotary Clubs, and other vital community organizations who have helped spread the word about this event. And of course, thank you to the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation for sharing with us your expertise and important ways that we can protect ourselves from fraud. Thank you again. Hi, I'm Senator Scott Wilk, and thank you for joining us today, and I want to personally welcome you. Protecting ourselves from cyber fraud and other related scams is topical in today's technology-driven era. While technology presents a world of opportunities for us to learn and connect, it also presents a world of opportunities for criminals to scam us out of personal information, money, and even our identities. During the pandemic, these types of crimes have soared. As our lives become more intertwined with the virtual world and technology advances, it is critically important to be aware of trends so that we can best protect ourselves and our loved ones. I hope you find today's webinar informative. Thank you to our partners, Assemblywoman Suzette Valadares and the California Department of Financial and Protection and Innovation. Thanks a lot. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for having me today. Thank you to our assembly member for putting this very important discussion together. Uh, this is an issue that can affect anyone, and I know in my district, my constituents call my office and ask about this problem all the time, and I'm sure I'm not the only one here today that uh, has received uh, spam calls asking me about my car's extended warranty. I seem to get that one a lot. Uh, you know, while this issue has obviously grown a lot in recent years, there are still so many things that you can do to protect yourself from any you know, type of scam, whether it be online or on the phone, you know, obviously the first thing you can do is what you're doing right now, and that's educating yourself about the different types of fraud that exist so that you can better identify these scams when you are, you know, browsing the web. And by, you know, being here, you can learn how to detect and avoid the most common and effective internet scams like malware and phishing scams. Uh, trust me when I say I have two kids who are extremely tech savvy and they have never won anything on the internet by clicking on a random ad. Uh, you know, basically, a good rule to follow is just don't share any sensitive or personal information with people that you don't know and only follow links that you completely trust. I, I think we've all probably seen the disclaimers, you know, at the bottom of emails or texts that say something like, you know, Bank of America will never ask for your social security number through a text. You know, that line is meant to keep you safe because it's true. Trusted institutions don't ask for sensitive information at random. They don't try to get your credit card information at random. And the same rules apply to protecting yourself from phone scams. 
you know, inform yourself about the way scammers will try to check, trick you. Don't share personal information. And if you're really not sure, um, you can do what I do. It's probably just a safer bet to simply hang up and not interact at all. Uh, on the phone, scammers will try to convince you that they are calling from a legit, legitimate organization. But these organizations usually don't call or text requesting personal details. You know, the IRS already knows your social security number so why would they call you to ask for it uh, you know if you're unsure whether the call or email is legitimate you should always exercise caution and resist the pressure to act immediately or give into their demands you know take a moment to talk to someone you know and trust and uh, discuss the situation and I think you know we can all keep ourselves safe so thank you again assembly member and thank you all for having me today Thank you to our elected officials. Today, it is our pleasure to come with Los Angeles County Sheriff Department with the, in the Santa Clarita Station. And we have Lieutenant Marcus Phillips uh, and he's joined also with Sergeant uh, Moreno. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Phillips of Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department of the Santa Clarita Station. I oversee our uh, detective bureau here. And I have with me a Sergeant uh, uh, Michael Marino, who is a subject matter expert when it comes to uh, fraud and uh, cyber crimes for our department. Um, I just want to uh, put it out there that if you do become a victim of a fraud or a cyber crime, it is important to report that crime. Um, the best way to report that, the easiest way to report that is contact your local uh, sheriff station or a uh, police department. Uh, in the case of, uh, you know, resident of Santa Cruz here, we will send a, a deputy out to your home. Uh, the deputy will uh, get your statement and uh, collect any evidence and uh, write a report. That report will then be uh, forwarded to our detective bureau here. Uh, an assessment will be made whether it will be investigated here at the station or in the, in the case of a, a more complex crime or a, a suspect that is identified that may be living out of the area or committing crimes out of the area, we will forward that uh, uh, case to our fraud and cyber crimes bureau. And uh, my partner, uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Mike Marino, can explain a little bit more about uh, the kind of cases they investigate and how they investigate those cases. Yeah, so the Fraud and Cyber Crimes Bureau will take the complex cases or the cases that are uh, span a large geographical area that would overwhelm the local uh, sheriff station detective bureau and investigate them. Uh, everyone in that unit has uh, expertise, uh, some in different fields. So we uh, send the cases appropriately to the person based on what the scam is. And uh, we'll follow them as far as we can. There are often times that the suspects actually are out of state or out of country even. If they're out of country, we, we lose a lot of jurisdiction, but uh, the Fraud and Cyber Crimes Bureau at the Sheriff's Department can reach anywhere in the continental United States or even Alaska and Hawaii to uh, find suspects and arrest them for the crimes they've committed uh, against the people that reside in our area. Well, thank you so much to the Los Angeles uh, County Sheriff's Department from the Santa Clarita Station. They are going to be staying with us also in case we have questions at the end uh, of our presentation. Uh, one of the greatest things about working in government is working with wonderful agencies from the state of California, helping our community. And that's why today I would like, I have the honor um, to work and present proudly the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, guiding us in how to protect yourself from cyber fraud and other scams. The FBI is going to be pre this presentation by Jackie Wiley and Siley Westlake. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Patsy. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. My name is Sally Westlake, and I'm an outreach specialist for the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, or DFPI for short. Thank you, Assemblymember Valadares and Senator Wilk for hosting this webinar on this very important topic of cyber fraud and other scams. So today's objective is to learn how not to become a victim of fraud and scams, because the more you know, the more you're able to protect yourself from fraud. So I'm going to share with you all about the department, who we are and what we do. Then you hear from my colleague about the different types of frauds and scams and how you can protect yourself from becoming a victim. Again, please submit your questions in the chat and we'll do our best to answer as many questions that we can today 
And at, uh, at the end, it, we will also have a slide with everyone's contact information. So please contact us if you have any additional questions or need help. So the Department of Financial Protection Innovation or DFPI, also formerly the De Department of Business Oversight, we protect consumers and foster trust by regulating companies and individuals offering financial products and services. As a state regulator, we license and regulate California banks and credit unions, money transmitters like Venmo, PayPal, payday lenders, debt collectors, rent to own contracts, credit reporting agencies, and many more. A full list is available on our website, but if they're providing financial products and services to Californians, we likely regulate them. So what is our role? We enforce the laws and regulation to the industries that we regulate. We conduct audits to ensure state and federal compliance, investigate consumer complaints of financial abuse and fraud, and pursue legal actions against those operating legally or are using unlawful, deceptive, or abusive business practices. We foster innovation by encouraging the development of responsible financial tools that help all Californians thrive. Our goal of the outreach team is to increase awareness so to protect consumers from these predatory businesses that are engaging in deceptive practices and to help protect consumers from falling prey to frauds and scams. So how do we promote our consumer awareness? First, we provide presentations, trainings in partnership with community-based organizations and legislative offices, just like we're doing today. Our topics can include a variety of financial topics, including fraud prevention and financial empowerment. Our team's focus is to inform the most vulnerable in our communities avoid scams and make choices that set them up for financial success. We educate seniors, military, veterans, immigrants, new Americans, students, homeowners, about using financial services wisely and about the department's activities as well as providing resources. We also provide educational publications. It's available on our website, but we can also send you a hard copy for free if you prefer. And this is just one of our publications you're seeing on the screen here called Protect Yourself from Fraud. This booklet is designed to encourage Californians to check before you invest and it provides information needed to stop financial and investment fraud before it happens. This booklet is great to have on hand because it'll remind you about some of the scams that we'll be discussing today. And the back of the booklet has a comprehensive resource guide with the phone numbers and websites. Studies have shown that an informed and educated consumer is less likely to fall victim to frauds and scams. I believe we have a lot of homeowners on the webinar today, so I did want to mention briefly the PACE program. The Property Assessed Clean Energy, or PACE, it's financing that allows property owners to pay for upgrades that increase energy efficiency, harness renewable energy, and or conserve water. Now, despite some similarities, PACE isn't alone. PACE financing does provide, with, provide you with upfront money, which you have to repay back over time. But because the financing is attached to, property, to the property and repaid through your property taxes, it's classified as a property assessment instead of a loan. PACE financing is not a government incentive or subsidy program. PACE does not provide any special discounts, government funding, or payment forgiveness to those who opt to use it. Now, some upgrades included in the PACE program are for solar, energy efficient doors and windows, or roof replacements. Now, I know how popular solar panels can be in the district. So you might have had a knock on that door, uh, on your door, an unsolicited knock that tells you, hey, are you tired of paying your high electricity bill every month? We have a government program that you qualify for and you can have a solar system with no upfront monies, no down payment, no out of pocket costs, giving the impression that all services are free. PACE is not a government program. Uh, homeowners must pay back the funding through their annual property tax. And no, you cannot use PACE to build a new deck or to update your master bathroom. If you believe you qualify for and want to use the PACE program for a qualifying home improvement, first, check the status of the contractor, 
Go to the contractor state license board website and make sure you know who's going to be doing the work. Then you're going to be checking back with us. We license the PACE program administrators and regulate the PACE industry. Unfortunately, many people have entered into these financing agreements and now are struggling with property tax payments because it has doubled or tripled and are, and are at risk of losing their homes or are left with incomplete or un, unpermitted work. So please do your homework. Start by contacting us to learn more about the risk and loss and more about the PACE program before you sign that contract. Up next is Jackie Wiley, Outreach Specialist with the FPI to tell you more about cyber fraud and other scams and how you can protect yourself. Jackie, the audience is yours. Thank you so much, Sally. Um, great presentation. And, you know, since the pandemic, I've been so nervous about um, choosing a contractor because unfortunately the bad ones make it bad for the good ones. So I become a good DIYer and probably some of you as well. Thank you for having us today. Um, like Sally said, I am also one of the targeted outreach specialists with the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. I was out of our Los Angeles office, and I'm hoping that um, what we talk about today will stick with you and give you some food for thought. So I want to get right into it for time purposes. We're going to talk about this first slide here, cyber fraud and some safety measures. I'm going to start with this first slide right here, the bogus and copycat slides. So, of course, a lot of us since the pandemic um, are banking and checking our information online. We're shopping online. We're making hotel reservations, especially now since the um, things are opening up. We're transferring money. We're using Zelle, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo and other apps. So I want to, you to be mindful that hackers are good at what they do. And most of them, like this um, lieutenant said earlier, are usually out of state or out of the country. But they're good at getting into people's um, information if you're not careful. So I want to just talk a little bit about providing an extra layer of protection on your cell phones. And when you're logging into your computer, maybe you want to do this two-step verification, which is an authentic an authentication, I can't never say that word, creates a code that comes directly to you for verification. Um, us here at the um, Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, we have that now that a lot of us and most of us are teleworking from home. So when I log in in the morning, and this will be a good practice for you as well, you know, I have to log in say maybe I do twice so that I can get that code. It comes directly to my cell phone. So if I have my cell phone, of course, in my possession, I'm going to get the code and not somebody else. I want to also talk about logging out of your applications when you're completing your transactions. I have been remiss sometimes when I'm going online and I'm checking my bank statements or, you know, seeing how much I have in my account or transferring money. Um, I don't log out. I want to instill for everyone here on this call today to please log out and sign out after you have completed um, doing any kind of transactions, okay? Verify if you get an email or a text message from your financial, quote unquote, your financial institution about a payment that has gone out or a payment that you're supposedly making. We're hearing a lot of, um, there's a lot of uptick for those who are receiving those type of messages. Please do not respond. Repeat, do not respond to the text message that you receive. Immediately call your institution to find out what's going on, um, especially if you know you haven't made that transaction. Anyone could be on the other line of that number you are calling and making it sound real. I just saw something on the news the other day with a young lady who had $2,000 depleted from her account because she received an email, um, a text message from her supposedly banking institution. So she called the number that was provided to her. And of course, the individual on the other line proceeded to say that he was from the financial institution that she banked with, and she needed to provide her personal information. So again, be mindful and do not respond to the text message or call the number that they are instructing you to do, okay, to, to call back. 
like said earlier, the experts are sitting in the rooms, um, your local contact, your local PD or your sheriff's department to file a complaint, um, that fraud and cybercrime bureau. And that's a blessing for us to all know about and to have. So when you're, again, wrapping up, if you are doing any business, which a lot of us are online, be mindful of the things that I just mentioned. But I want to ask this question to the audience. How do you know if you are on a secure network? I'm hoping that most of you understand that when you have this HTTPS in your um, browser section, that that S right there, that S after that P means secure or you should see and or you should see this lock and it should be closed. So that will tell you that you are on a secure site. Also to the fact that some of us get rerouted to um, a secured site and the system will usually tell you that. So be mindful that that S is secure and you should see that lock. That's an extra layer of protection to let you know that the site that you're using is secure. Also, it's be, it would behoove us all to start hovering over the link that is shown in that URL. We are also seeing an uptick with these copycat and bogus websites. And especially now that the time for tax is a tax season is upon us, be aware of um, following when you use TurboTax and other sites to do your taxes. Um, instances where individuals has actually filed their tax, got all the way to the end, clicked the button to say submit, and a message has popped up indicating that they've already filed their taxes. These bogus and copycat sites are intended to mirror official websites, especially with the IRS website. So these emails instruct consumers to update their IRS e-files immediately. But of course, it's actually wanting to you to um, provide your personal information. These copycat sites, they carry malware that infects computers and allows the criminals to access your files and get this, track your keystrokes to gain your private information. So, and it's asking for your personal information that may be used to file false tax returns. Um, maybe you ordered something online and they're asking you to re-enter your credit card number. Be mindful. The safety tool here is again, pay attention to the extension of the email, get into the practice of hovering to verify that the email that you're using is correct. We've had instances where an individual was actually shopping on Amazon, and we all know that Amazon site is amazon.com. She actually received an email saying, hey, something happened with your shipping, we're going to need you to re-enter your credit card information again. And of course, we she's waiting for her shipping. When you do shipping online, you know, you're going to get that email saying that your, your, your purchase was confirmed, but she got an email saying that there was a problem with it. And she proceeded to do just what they asked her to do, to re-enter her um credit card information. Later on, right after she hit that button, she noticed that it was a copycat site. It was amazon.com, C-O-N, instead of amazon.com. So please be mindful to hover and verify the information, the link that you are working with before you enter in your um, personal information. And I want to say this, if someone is calling you or emailing you saying you have a bug or a virus on your computer, hang up. We've had instances where individuals weren't even on the computer or didn't even own a computer and they got that call. Um, if you are on the computer and your computer starts going crazy, immediately log off. OK, and like um, someone said earlier, we have. <laughs> children, grandchildren who are very computer savvy. So if you have questions about an application that you don't understand, it's wise to ask questions before you start doing it. Let's talk about limited personal information. Um, for seniors or older adults, we'll call them. I know my mom is one of them who is very excited about a hey, having um a cell phone that she can do FaceTime, you know, that she can get on Facebook and look up her, um, her old friends or, you know, family members that she hasn't talked to in a long time. And, you know, 
people are just putting way too much information on the website. Um, I'm happy that you're going to Hawaii and that you're leaving Sunday on March 27th and you're gonna be returning on April 1st. That is way too much information to be putting on Facebook. Um, you're kind of opening up a, a can of worms for someone to possibly know that you're not gonna be home within that time frame. So please limit your personal information. I wanna end this um, um, session, this section, I wanna talk about the online romance scams. It's so unfortunate that seniors are excited to be, again, a part of this modern technology. A lot of them are lonely, have become isolated since the pandemic, and they welcome the attention, whether it's via phone call or now the internet. I learned yesterday through an article that more than 3,000 Californians have fallen victim to online romance scams last year losing a total of nearly $184 million, according to a recent report from the FBI Internet Crime Complaint Center. These online interactions, which can occur on dating apps, social media, and other websites involve scammers forming fake romantic relationship with victims in order to manipulate them and take their money. And according to the FBI, often these money payments take place in the form now of cryptocurrency, or they're wanting you to go gift, go purchase gift cards, come back and scratch the back of the card and give them that number with maybe the $500,000 that they've asked you to put on there. So I'm here to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 loneliness, isolation, um, you know, affords people to, um, get um, comfort from um, other measures. And that measure has been the online um, romance scam. So be careful what you post and make public online. Verify the person's photo and see if it's being used elsewhere. Because most of the time or lots of the times these photos that these cute individuals are posting, oh my God, he looks great. They're photoshopped. If you don't know how to Google an image search, ask somebody to do that as well. Ask a lot of questions. And one thing, beware if the individual seems too perfect and quickly starts asking to communicate with you and take the conversation offline. But the only thing is, is that they're not able to meet up in person. They always have some type of an excuse, but they need money to do other things with. It's really unfortunate that our um, older adults, they hide information and, and the young adults as well. Um, so please, please talk to your friends and your family um, about um, these, these things that are happening. And beware if the individual requests inappropriate photos or financial information. As a general rule, just avoid scams of any kind never send money to anyone you have only communicated with online or by phone. So limit that personal information. And passwords, because a lot of us are doing a lot of banking or a lot of business online and through our phones and through our um, computers, it's suggested that we start frequently changing our passwords and not using the normal, my mom's maiden name or my kid's date of birth maybe think about using and creating a phrase instead of the word. The stronger your password, the better. But again, be mindful and start logging out, changing your passwords, limiting your personal information, and make sure that the sites that you are using are reputable sites. Okay, next slide, please. I want to go over quickly about some of the trending pandemic inspired frauds that we are hearing about. And I want to talk about what's trending these telephone scams. Again, there are so many scenarios created to scam and defraud us with the sole purpose of gaining access to our personal information, which is identity theft, and of course, gaining access to our money. So since the pandemic, a lot of us have been home are still home and makes us more accessible to answering the phones. When someone calls with an opportunity or offer up such, 
you know, a caller, they talk really fast, you can't get a word in edgewise. And, you know, because they're really pushing their product and they want to befriend you, they will wear you out. And I'm sure everybody on this webinar today gets solicitation phone calls each day, all day long. And many of us are considering it. And what we're not doing is we're not doing our homework. Do your homework, do your homework, do your homework, which means verify the information. And we're just believing what the caller is saying. And we're still, we're still hearing about that grandparent relative scam. When someone is calling and they'll say, hi, grandma, how are you today? It's me. And you might say something like, hey, Jackie, I haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on? What you have done, you have given that caller the name of your grandchild. And they're going to proceed to tell you that they've been in trouble and they need money right away. Um, before you um, go and get the money or send the money, they're even going to tell you to put the um, they're going to even put an offer some possibly on the line to make the phone call sound more believable. Please, please, please verify that the individual that's calling you for help is, is safe before you go out and get the money. We're hearing about the social security phone call. I'm getting voice messages um, left on my voice machine saying that my social security card has been compromised and that I need to call this number right away to get it rectified. Now, earlier, we already know government agencies are not going to call you. All phone calls that we hear, we receive them all day long, sometimes during the middle of the night can be very frightening. But please, before you jump and do anything and fork over your money, verify your information. And it's the same thing with the credit card. I'm getting some calls that says my credit card has been used and to verify, please call this number if I've made this purchase. Again, you don't know who is on the other end of the line. If you don't get anything out of today's presentation, that is one thing you need to remember. When we are getting phone calls, we don't know who is on the other end of the line. So don't believe the caller, okay? Financial relief. A lot of us are financially strapped, struggling, and we are looking forward to any type of financial relief opportunity that may come our way. I'm here to tell you, again, all money is not good money and all breaks or re financial relief is not good for us. Do your homework and verify your information. Don't allow that caller to coax you into providing your personal information or even tell you that they can help get you out of a situation a situation for a fee. Remember, you don't know who's on the other end of the line. We're hearing about that utility company scam. Someone calls and says, hey, I'm from DWP and I'm working the delinquent department and I see that your bill is delinquent. If you don't pay us by, by credit card or pay by check right now, your services are going to be cut off by five o'clock today. Again, another frightening um, phone call. But you ask yourself, did I pay the bill? I remember paying that bill. Don't allow the caller to persuade you that what they're telling you is true. And even more importantly, if your bill is delinquent, ladies and gentlemen, what are you going to get? You're going to get that bill in the mail with that bread stamp on it that says, pass due, pay now. Utility companies are not calling us to tell us or remind us that we haven't paid our bill or that our bill is late. Again, government agencies won't call you, all right? The DFPI also licenses debt collectors, and you should know your rights when dealing with debt collectors. We are hearing people complain about debt collectors harassing them all day, every day, possibly about a bill that they don't even have. Remember, a debt collector is a third party that's trying to collect on a debt, and they're going to offer you to cut that bill in half if you pay now. But if you're being harassed for a bill that you don't owe, contact us and know your rights because they're not supposed to um, threaten you. They're not supposed to call you all day and after a certain hour. File your complaint with the department today. I want to wrap this up by reminding everybody that um, charities. Um, disaster scams are heightening. 
It's unfortunate about the um, disasters that we are hearing about today, like Ukraine, Haiti, and all of the wildfires that have taken place and are still um, blazing. Please check with CharityNavigator.org before you send your money and know that the police, sheriff, and fire departments do not call you to solicit for money. And remember, Jackie said from the DFPI, I need to be mindful about who's on the other end of the line and never call the number that is left on my voicemail or my answering machine. Because again, you don't know who is on the other end of the line. Next slide, please. So safeguarding your personal and financial information, that telephone, it's always best to just hang up. Like um, uh, Mr. Lee said today, Assemblyman John Lee, hang up. Um, if it's somebody that you want to talk to, you see on your viewer, um, a number that you don't recognize, don't answer the call. When we give the, uh, the, the caller a mile, they're going to make it into a mountain. Don't call the number left on your machine. Go to the source yourself, which means if somebody's leaving a message indicating that they are from your financial institution, maybe they're telling you that they're updating their records and they need you to provide your social security number, your personal information, your banking number, stop and think to yourself, hey, if I'm a customer of that financial institution, they should already have that information. So don't provide that. Check with your phone company to block or set up scam likely calls. Call your phone company to find out how you can do that. My cell phone, when it rings, I will see scam likely and I'm definitely not going to get it. When you answer the phone and someone calls out your name and you'll, they'll say, hello, am I speaking with Jackie? I'm going to just say, nope, not at this number. Why? Because it's a number that I don't recognize or it's going to show me or it has shown me an unknown caller. I don't know who an unknown caller is. So again, remember, you don't know who is on the other end of the line. We've talked about the online service use and um, internet email or text messages. Change your passwords often. Remember to log out and be cautious with the technology. Understanding it is key. Protect your social security number, your credit cards, your debit cards, and PIN numbers like it's your firstborn, okay? Remember that that secure site will have that S after HTTP, and you'll see that lock. And please be careful clicking into um, text messages and emails, even if you are recognized the name of the organization or the store. I get a lot of advertisements from Kohl's or JCPenney's. Just be mindful of clicking into those text messages and emails. Investment opportunities, don't allow somebody to coax you or badger you, badgering you into making a financial decision right away. Take time, mull it over, but more importantly, do your homework. Contact the DFPI to verify your information. Talk to someone and ask questions and, and see what they think family member or friend. Mail, please, please, if you are shopping online, you might want to retrieve your packages as soon as, they, as, soon as you know that they are delivered um, before someone else goes on your porch and retrieves them before you can get to it. If you have the mailbox that has that red flag and you put your mail inside, waiting for the postman to come on by, that is also an invitation for individuals to come by and take your mail out of the box before the postman gets there. Maybe learn about the schedule before you put your mail in the box. And if you're using an outside mailbox, the blue box, never put your mail in there after the last pickup. It's pickup time. Unfortunately, we do have dumpster divers. We also have mail thieves who are still... Um, retrieving people's information. When you receive that junk mail that we used to call it, it's really not junk mail anymore. Don't put the applications in, the, in your trash can without shredding them or tearing them up. That is a weapon for someone to pull it out of your trash can and become you. Credit versus debit. A lot of us are not maybe familiar with the terminology of skimmers, but I'm here to let you know that there's a device that cannot be seen normally over the machines. 
So when you put your card in and you punch in your PIN number, and if that skimmer is on there, your card has just been compromised. The person will come, take that machine, take your information, and they also have your PIN number. So when you're using your debit card, try to remember to say credit. Bypass the, per the point where you need to punch in your PIN number, which will give you more of protection from your card being compromised, okay? Monitor and freezing your credit. If you're done with establishing new credit, this is a great thing to do. My mom is not going to be opening up any new credit card. She's not going to be getting a home. She doesn't need to... Um, open up any new credit at this time. So maybe you might wanna think about putting a freeze on it um, and it's free to do so. Remember, review your statements carefully and dispute any charges that's not yours immediately. You can place a freeze on your credit by contacting the three credit bureaus and then that information will be provided on the following slide. I always talk to my audience about check writers. I'm still a little old school myself, and I do write checks occasionally for whatever the reason may be, um, the bill or whatever. But there is also um, a solution that individuals can purchase to check wash your checks. Be mindful of that. They can check wash the, the, the amount and the payee, and your name will continue to be there as a sign um, the check writer. I'm going to suggest that you purchase an anti-fraud pen, and you can get that at Staples or Office Depot. So if you think that you've become a victim of, of identity theft, you can file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission, which is a federal government agency, and that information is at the bottom of the screen. Next slide, please. There's that page about the credit bureaus. We've um, provided you with the phone numbers as well as the email addresses. And to get your credit report annually or make a request for all three, that information is there as well. Next slide, please. So the bottom line today of all that I have, um, the information that I have provided, please continue to trust your instincts. If it seems to be too good to be true, it probably is. And never give out your personal information unless you initiated the contact. And always go to the source, which means do not contact the number or um, that's left on your answering machine or a number that you're unfamiliar with. Go to the source yourself. Next slide, please. How can the DFPI help you? Well, you can go to a, learn about us at our website that's posted here. Our website hosts helpful resources and an abundance of information. We pride on um, giving these presentations because our audience is vital to the department. You're like our eyes and our ears out there. If you know somebody is breaking the law, let us know about it. You can file a complaint here at, um, with this link or you can simply call our toll free number, which is shown here on the screen as well. Our consumer services offices, um, um, we have live people answering the phones and we're one of the few live call centers in state government with less than five minutes wait time. So you don't have to press one, press two, and you're not gonna be all day waiting for someone to answer your call. We offer translation services in dozens of languages and never ask for a person's immigration status. By calling our toll free number, we can help you verify the licensing status of a financial institution, service, or professional that you're thinking about doing business with. I'm saying do this before you engage, before you fork over your money, do your homework. We can also provide consumers with information on how to file a complaint about the institutions or individuals licensed by our department. And if it's not within our jurisdiction, we can assist you in identifying and contacting the regulatory agency that can help with that complaint. We also, um, you can email us by at, at this website right here. If you're interested in a publication or a presentation, send us an email to our outreach bin and we'll be happy to provide that information for you. Next slide, please. So please stay in touch with us. Get our monthly newsletter, event updates, consumer alerts, important notices can uh, is is with our um, 
when you subscribe to our communications. Shown there is the website, is the email link for that. I'm sorry. And then also follow us on our social media. We can be um, followed on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And this is just a shortcut um, link to that. Um, so by subscribing to our communications, you'll be able to keep in touch with us, learn about what the DFPI is doing, new laws and regulations with the federal and state, and also information about our events and other updated information. Next slide. So thank you for allowing me to share that information. And again, if you haven't learned anything, remember, you never know who is on the other end of the line and watch your cyber activity. It's time for question and answers. Patsy, over to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sally and Jackie from the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation for sharing this valuable information to our constituents. And as Jackie said, it is now time for questions and answers for all of our constituents. I'm going to be introducing you the agencies that we have available. And in case you have any question, feel free to share it in the chat. We have uh, from uh, federal government, from the Office of Congress, Congressman Mike Garcia, Tammy Stevens from the state of California and um, the office of Senator Scott Wilk. We have Chris Hoff. I am attending on behalf of Assemblywoman Baladares here live, but on the chat, we have uh, our senior field representative, Anthony Angelini. And from the county, from the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department, we have Lieutenant Phillips and Sergeant uh, Marino ready for um, your questions. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we have, um, I don't see uh, if we have right now anything on the chat, but also I will give um, Lieutenant Phillips and Sergeant Marino, is there anything additional that you would like to share with our audience? Uh, the only thing I would add is just uh, pay attention to the prevention side of these crimes because it, it's better off if you don't become a victim in the first place. So I think most of that advice that, that uh, was presented today is good advice. If you heed that advice and, and do your best to prevent yourself from becoming a victim in the first place, uh, that's the uh, best way to do it. Thank you. I also want to give the opportunity for the Office of uh, Congressman Mike Garcia. Tell me uh, what areas um, federal government, our constituents can call you. You are mute, uh, Tammy. Good morning, everybody. Um, for the federal government, and well, it depends on, on you know the agency that it is, but you know you can certainly reach out to our office and we can direct you. A lot of it's you know the FBI, but if there's a specific agency that you're working with that you're needing assistance with, we we can guide you. Thank you, Tammy. Um, I see somebody in the chat says, um, when we have, uh, Laura asking, uh, when we have a fraud on our credit cards and once with a check fraud, we have reported to the banking institution for them to handle. Is this enough or should we have contacted or we need to contact the fraud department? So somebody from the FBI would like to address that? I'll take that. <clears throat> um, so you had fraud on your credit card. The first thing that you should have done was contacted the credit um, bureau um, to place the freeze on your credit card. Contacting your credit card itself to let them know that and to dispute the um, charge. Um, reporting it to the banking institution, of course, monitoring your bank account, maybe if it, maybe to close it and reopen. Um, and it's always good to um, do a police report. And I would also say you, it's never to, it, you don't, it doesn't hurt to contact the fraud department as well. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I don't see any other question for, uh, here, but uh, for uh, our attendees, in case you have, a, I mean, we're here right now, but in case you have a question, uh, later on, we're gonna be sharing the information of our agencies. Um, and 
you can contact us on our website, uh, giving us a call, and we have a template also follow this, um, our q and A. I I have another question here that it says, uh, I recently was lied at a dealership. Um, how can, uh, well, he doesn't say exactly what, uh, but with things with dealership, um, how is to make a complaint, how they can go, what agency they can go or where they can call if they have a complaint. I'm not sure about that one, Sally. So it depends on at which point I think the lie, potential lie was made at. Does it have to do with the actually the financing of the contract or was it just a salesman trying to make a sale that lied about, oh, yeah, I'll include free oil changes for the next six months if you buy the car today versus tomorrow. It's a special deal. So I think we need to have a little bit more information, but please go ahead and start with, if you don't know who you need to call, you can go ahead and call uh, your legislative offices. Okay, so I'm going to refer that back to Patsy's office, uh, you know, Assemblyman Vidaris or Senator Wilkes office. Call them and they have caseworkers and then they can get you to the right state agency. Again, in this limited format that we're in the webinar, we don't want personal information. We don't want too much information. Um, so please contact us afterwards and we'd be happy to help. Okay, for that, uh, for the following of that, of course, uh, we're going to have uh, Sally and Jackie's information and, of course, uh, from the Sheriff's Department, if there's something that they need to know, too. And uh, somebody's asking if we're going to be sharing uh, the presentation of PowerPoint. Absolutely. For our attendees, we can, we can share that. Um, I don't see any more questions. So, you know, let's uh, go to the uh, information for our agencies for everybody to see where they can reach us. So for, um, of course, for the state issues, you can call um, assemb contact Assemblywoman Suzette Baladares, Senator Scott Will, or the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. For federal issues, Congressman Mike Garcia. For the city of Los Angeles, uh, you can contact Los Angeles City Council John Lee. And of course, our uh, for our law enforcement, uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff Department, you have the information here and we're gonna be sharing, of course, also the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you uh, for joining us this morning for creating more um, awareness for cybersecurity. And here are other helpful resources from the FBI. Jackie and just, or Sally, and just in, in case you wanna say something and over here, but uh, this is very, uh, very valuable information with all the topics that um, they were sharing to be alert, uh, the agencies that you can call or um, send an email. Uh, thank you for sharing these um, helpful resources. And with that, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. I'm gonna um, have our assemblywoman. I hope you found that information as valuable as I did. I'm constantly working to find new ways to protect you and the rest of our community. And I wanted to connect you to these helpful tools to keep you, your information, and your money safe. Thank you again to the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation and to Congressman Mike Garcia, Senator Scott Wilk, Councilman John Lee, and our other community partners for helping make this event such a success. If there's anything that I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out to my office. And thank you for taking the time today to learn new ways to protect yourself from fraud.